over there. <laughs> Hello everyone. We'd like to get started. I would like to invite the Honorable Todd Smith, MPP for Bay of Quinte, Riding and Minister of Energy to the podium. Well, thanks very much, uh, Melissa. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, great to be here with all of you on a, uh, a Monday, a day after a record-setting day in our province. Wasn't that beautiful yesterday? Um, it's been a real pleasure uh, to get to speak uh, with uh, many of your peers here, Melissa, uh, who've been working tirelessly day after day. Over the past two years in particular, uh, during this pandemic, providing exemplary care in homes, and community settings here in Belleville and across our region. Uh, thanks for all the work you do. I know that it's appreciated by those who receive the care from you, and uh, it's, it's uh, appreciated by the families and, and certainly appreciated by our government as well. Fortunately, it appears uh, that better days are ahead. We certainly hope so. And I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to welcome uh, Janet here as well, Janet Deglish, a National Director for Bayshore Home Care. And uh, where's Janet? Janet's hiding. Oh, there's Janet over there. And, uh, and Sue Vanderbent as well. Great to have you with us here, uh, Sue, as well. Sue is the CEO of Home Care Ontario. And uh, we welcome you both to Bay of Quinte, one of the most beautiful places in the province of Ontario. And uh, also to introduce uh, my good friend and colleague, Deputy 
Premier and Minister of Health, Christine Elliott. And uh, Christine has been here many times over the last uh, 11 years that we've been colleagues together, and it's great to welcome her to Bay of Quinte uh, one more time. I, I've served along uh, with Christine, who represents Newmarket Aurora, for the better part of the past 11 years, and she's brought professionalism and she's brought a lot of wisdom uh, to her role, and uh, she's earned a great respect within our caucus at Queen's Park, and over the past couple of years in particular, uh, Minister Elliott has guided us through COVID with strong, steady leadership. She showed incredible resolve in ensuring that we made the necessary decisions to build capacity and to keep Ontario residents safe. And I commend her on her tenure of public service, and I do wish her well in the next chapter of her life. And I'd be remiss if I didn't take a moment also to thank Minister Elliott for listening to the health care needs uh, of us here in Bay of Quinte. And it's great to have Stacey Dobb from Quinte Healthcare here as well. Um, her decision to provide annualized funding increases for small, medium, and multi-site hospitals really has been a game changer for the future stability of all of our Quinte Healthcare hospitals, and there would be four of them in the QA family, including Belleville, Trenton, Prince Edward County, and North Hastings up in Bancroft. We're also set to open a new $14 million community health centre over in Quinty West, which we're really excited about, and breaking ground on the brand new Prince Edward County Memorial Hospital uh, real soon. And uh, we've also seen uh, major changes uh, in our regional ICU. It's expanding as well at this time. So, so all great news and uh, tremendous investments in health care in the Bay of Quinty region. So thank you, Christine, for that. We also have a new Ontario health team. Uh, that's going to uh, transform patient-centered care in our area. And we were just talking about that when we came to this room here this afternoon. The difference that that is going to make in making sure that people get the care that they need where they want it. And uh, all of these investments and others are going to have a positive impact, uh, not just tomorrow, uh, but for generations in, in our province and in our region here in Bay of Quinte. So uh, I'm really excited to hear about the next big positive investment in our area and for our province. And it's my pleasure to introduce uh, my good friend, uh, the Minister of Health, Christine Elliott. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It is always great to be back in Belleville and beautiful Bay of Quinte. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Minister Smith, for your very, very kind introduction. I have had the pleasure of working with Todd since 2011, as he mentioned, and I'm very, very grateful for your support and friendship and advice over all of those years. In opposition, Todd always stood up for the little guy and was a champion for making life more affordable. That trend continues in his role as Minister of Energy, where he continues to deliver savings for families and businesses. He's everything you'd want in a public servant and also as a friend. I'd also like to say thank you to Janet Daglish, Danielle Gruber, and Melissa Bryan from Bayshore for hosting us today, as well as to Sue Vanderbent from Home Care Ontario for joining us today. Home and Community Care has always been a critical part of Ontario's health care system. And the past two years have only further reinforced the importance of receiving care in the right setting. I'd also like to thank all of the health care workers in Belleville, Hastings County, and across the province. Even when faced with the unprecedented challenges of the last two years, Ontario's health care workers have continued to work tirelessly to support the health and well-being of their patients. This is especially true for Ontario's nurses, who have played such a vital role in our fight against COVID-19. Whether it's in our ICUs, long-term care homes, care in the community or at home, or administering COVID vaccines in mass vaccinations of clinics across the province, we could not have done it without the bravery and selflessness of our nurses. A strong nursing workforce is going to be critical to supporting the province's recovery in the months and years ahead. Simply put, an investment in our nurses is an investment in our future. So that's why I'm very pleased to announce today that our government is investing $763 million to provide Ontario's nurses with a retention payment. 
Through this retention payment, Ontario will provide a lump sum payment of up to $5,000 for eligible full-time nurses and a prorated payment of up to $5,000 for eligible part-time and casual nursing staff. This payment will be made in two installments and we are currently working with employers to roll out the first payment within the next few months. Nurses throughout our healthcare system and across sectors will be eligible, including those working in hospitals, long-term care or retirement homes, home and community care, primary care, mental health and addictions, and emergency services. As we continue our efforts to build up our nursing workforce, this investment will help us to retain the nurses that we already have. And it will help to ensure that patients will continue to receive the care they need when and where they need it. So thank you very much. And I would now like to turn it over to Melissa Bryan, one of Bayshore's fantastic registered nurses, to say a few words. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Melissa Bryan. I'm a manager of clinical practice and a nurse here in Belleville. I began uh, my healthcare career as a PSW and became an RPN and I'm now a registered nurse in home care. First, I want to thank Minister Elliott for today's funding announcement. The COVID-19 pandemic has been incredibly challenging for home care. And the, and the nurses that are working in home care and in every sector. This investment in nurses by the Ontario government is a welcome recognition of the outstanding knowledge, skills, and professionalism of nurses. It will help ensure the continuity of safe, high quality care for patients in their homes and communities. I'm passionate about the care that I provide to my, my patients in their homes and being a part of a nursing team in my community. I love working in patient homes because it's highly personalized. And I get to know the whole family, not just the patient. Through home visits, I have learned that our patients want to remain in their homes. They're so incredibly thankful for how we work with them and their families to provide that personalized care service that allows them to remain in the comfort of their homes. Thank you again for the critical investment in nurses. I'd li now like to introduce Sue Vanderbent, CEO of Home Care Ontario to the podium. Thank you, Melissa. And uh, thank you for inviting me today. And I appreciate Minister Elliott and Minister Todd for coming, and Stacy Dobb as well, a colleague of mine for many years. Uh, I wanted to start by uh, letting you know my name is Sue Vanderman, CEO of Home Care Ontario, and I've been in this role for many, many years, uh, really working to try to help people. Uh, all people understand how important the home care system is and exactly what Melissa said, which is that people want to stay at home, they want to live their lives at home, and they want to end their days at home. And that is really the goal of most Ontarians. And we want to create a, a system that allows them to do that. It's a real pleasure for me today to be at this announcement today because we know that hundreds of thousands of Ontarians rely on home care and our home care nursing staff every day. Uh, we, we have needs for them that are at all ages and stages of life. This is not for one type of patient. Home care is for people with young babies. It's for moms who've come home from the hospital with a young baby, young children in school, for people of middle age who have chronic diseases or comorbid conditions, and people who are senior and who live at home and have needs for bathing and support at home. 
So these parents, these people are our grandparents, they're our parents, they're people in this world who, and in this area, uh, who live quietly and in the privacy of their own homes. And that's why home care is not very well known, uh, because we actually go to people's homes and we provide the care there in the privacy of their own homes. But every day there's a home care worker on the road at all hours of the day and night. Our PSWs, our nurses, our many, many therapists are out there taking care of Ontarians. So today I want to thank Minister Elliott for this wonderful announcement because it helps sustain our nurses and it helps keep our valuable home care nurses like Melissa here with us. Uh, and even though nursing in other parts of the system is great, uh, I believe that the greatest influence you can have is to keep people at home and help them stay at home and be at home for the rest of their lives. Home care has been devastated by the pandemic. We know that a lot of attention has been paid to hospitals and long-term care, and rightly so because of the COVID pandemic. Uh, a lot of adjustments have been made, but we have to gain grain, uh, ground now, and we have to make sure that we build up a system that's better for people, which is really to be at home. So I look forward to uh, working uh, with uh, all of our elected representatives. I know we're coming into a provincial election now, but I know that we will elect people who are going to be helpful in us achieving this goal for all Ontarians to be at home. And thank you again, Minister, for this wonderful announcement today. Please line up in a single file line behind me. Uh, when you step up to the mic, please say your name and which outlet you're with. And just a reminder, it's one question, one follow-up. Hi there, Tiffany Foxcroft with CBC Marketplace. The people of this province have told you they want home care over nursing homes, and experts say it's also the most cost-effective. Today's announcement's a drop in the bucket compared to the $6 billion that's spent on nursing homes. Aside from today's announcement about the nursing, why isn't Ontario doing more to invest in home care? Well, thank you very much for the question. You're uh, absolutely right. It's been described to me as, as a three-legged stool, and yet it's long-term care, um, hospitals, and home care. And what we're doing now is reinforcing home care. We are modernizing the system. We are making sure that patients can receive the, the care that they need. We will be making those investments as well to make sure that it's not just a policy change, but it's a real change and that people will be able to receive more care in their own homes. It's, as, as you've indicated, it's a less expensive alternative, but more than that, it's where people want to be. And so we recognize that and our government is going to continue to make investments in home care. Thank you. I have a follow up. Experts say that profits shouldn't be part of home care in Ontario. With such limited funding, why is so much of it going to for profit providers like Bayshore? Well, we think that everybody is important in providing home care and long term care. Uh, all of that is important, whether it is um, private providers or not for profit providers. It's all funded. Uh, appropriately and so we the, we believe there's a mixture for both and quite frankly if we got rid of what some of the private uh, companies are doing both in home care and long-term care we would be in a very bad situation right now because we already have in terms of long-term care over 30,000 people that are waiting for care so we need to uh, continue to make investments in both. Bayshore paid out millions to their shareholders last year should that money be going to better home care? That is a, a way of operating. We don't. Uh, we supply the uh, the uh, funding uh, for the operations, and uh, that is up to individuals to determine whether they want to make those investments or not. But Bayshore provides excellent care, as do many of the other private providers, as well as our not-for-profit providers. Hi. Good morning, Tom Harris for CTV. Hi, Tom. Today. Uh, no doubt you've seen the coverage of the uh, concerns of some trillium doctors about uh, what they call abusive working conditions. Um, should the ministry step in? 
Well, as you know, all of the hospitals are independent corporations. They have their own board of government uh, governors and they make their own decisions, but we know that they take this very seriously and that they are working through this problem, which um, nobody wants to work in a, in a, a work situation that is not healthy physically and mentally, and so uh, we are working with them, but that is, it is up to the individual hospital to take action, and we know that they are. Okay, and the follow-up is, um, how can you have confidence in the hospital's investigation of itself? Hospitals investigating themselves, I'm just wondering what your, your thoughts are, but shouldn't there be something like more independent? If there is need for that, we are awaiting the uh, results of the initial investigation. If we're not satisfied with that, there are other steps that we can take, but I think it's important, first of all, uh, for their own Board of Governors to take a look at this and make determinations about what they think should happen, but we will certainly be reviewing that with them. Government Minister, uh, Luke Hendry from the Intelligence Sir. Um, just uh, recognizing that this is an announcement about nurses, um, a lot of people say that there are a lot more problems on that in home care. Uh, a lot of the care is provided by PSWs and, and other folks uh, who say that they are strapped in terms of timelines. They, they don't have time for breaks, don't have time for travel. That's something we have a very uh, spread out population here in Hastings mm -hmm. and Prince Do you see this as being part of a, a larger redesign of home care? Because that's being called for in, in folks in that sector and in health care saying that we have to integrate these systems in. Uh, in a more streamlined way and uh, and support folks at home <clears throat> but also excuse me uh, support those folks uh, that are providing the care well yes we are actually modernizing the home care system it hasn't been really reviewed since the uh, 1990s and it is time for a change as we're taking a look at um, patient-centered care and how should that be delivered we know that there have been restrictions in the past that people have only gotten a certain number of hours regardless of how many hours you actually need. So we are taking a look at that right now, and we are also looking at who is best to provide the care, whether it's uh, personal support workers, whether it's registered practical nurses, registered nurses, uh, or in some case, perhaps nurse practitioners. So we're looking at the best person to deliver the best care for the patient's needs. Thank you. And uh, uh, on another point, uh, hospitals in southeastern Ontario uh, in Windsor, in the north, they are seeing uh, higher uh, test positivity rates than in other parts of the province. Yet there's still a lot of talk about uh, taking masks off after March break. Is that uh, still what the government's looking at? Uh, one of your science advisors uh, told us that it was recently as Friday that the government's been two to four weeks ahead of what he would have recommended uh, in, in lifting restrictions. Well, I know that Dr. Moore is watching that very carefully because you're right, there are certain areas of the province that have higher numbers of COVID and we're also looking at wastewater surveillance too, which is sort of the canary in the coal mine that can tell us if there is something that we need to be concerned about in the, that's coming in the future. So Dr. Moore is following this very carefully and, and of course, a release of any further uh, restrictions, masking being the biggest one, is something that we're paying particular attention to right now. And of course, there are also um, Section 22 orders that can still continue to be made by local public health units. So all of this is being uh, watched very carefully because we want to make sure that the entire province can, uh, can then be able to move forward because our economic and social recovery depends on that. Last question. Thanks, Minister Elliott. Uh, Ryan Pettigrew, Global News, Kingston. Uh, the professional bodies, traditional Chinese medicine, say they didn't even get an email from your government before the plan to deregulate it came about. So who exactly were you in contact with, and if the issue was necessary, or what is the language gap, rather, why was it necessary to wind down the College of Traditional Chinese Medicine Practitioners and Acupuncturists of Ontario to, make address, or to address this issue? Well, actually, we have made a determination that we are not going to be proceeding with that measure to have 
uh, the uh, traditional Chinese medicine practitioners are regulated by the, uh, the new authority that regulates personal support workers. What we have determined to do is to work with the college to uh, allow for the exam to be written in, uh, in Chinese because we know that there were a number of practitioners who were not able to write the exam in English. It was a significant impediment to them becoming registered. And so we have concluded that uh, for them to be able to write the exam in Chinese is a better alternative. Follow up. Are you looking into giving pharmacists the ability to prescribe antivirals to treat COVID-19? Well, that is something that we are looking at uh, right now because we do have them in uh, a number of parts of the province. Uh, they're not widely distributed as yet, but as we expand, uh, the uh, pharmacists may well be able to provide them. Uh, there hasn't been a significant uptake in some of the, uh, the antivirals as yet. Uh, we don't have that large a supply, but as we do, we want to make them available to people across the province. And we know that pharmacies have been particularly uh, helpful in delivering the, uh, the vaccines. Uh, they are um, very well qualified and may well be able to uh, work with the antivirals as well. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. That concludes the announcement. Um, I think we'll take a picture now. Okay.